I'd like to extend a warm welcome to you all on this beautiful morning. On behalf of the Legion and the Park City History Museum, thank you so much for being here. We will begin this morning with a posting of the colors from the Hill Air Force Base Honor Guard, followed by the national anthem sung by our amazing troublemakers, and then we will have an invocation uh, from Father Busson. So, thank you. Colors, pretty, cut. Forward, march. Gracious God, on this Memorial Day, we remember and give thanks for those who have given their lives in the service of our country. When the need was greatest, they stepped forward to defend the freedoms we enjoy. O oh God, you yourself have taught us that no love is greater than that which gives itself for another. Today, we remember especially Major Robert Pirtle and Sergeant Jack Anderson. They are numbered among the honored dead who gave the most precious gift they had, life itself, for loved ones and neighbors, for comrades and country, and for us. Help us to honor the memory of them all by caring for the family members they have left behind, by ensuring that their wounded comrades have been properly cared for, by being watchful caretakers of the freedom for which they gave their lives, and by demanding that no other young men and women follow them to a soldier's grave unless the reason is worthy and the cause is just. Holy One, help us to remember that our freedoms are not free. There are times when its cost is indeed dear. Never let us forget those who paid so terrible a price to ensure that freedom would be our legacy. Though their names fade with the passing of generations, may we never forget what they have done. Help us to be worthy of their sacrifice. Oh God, help us to be worthy. Amen. Memorial Day is a day of remembering the men and women who died in service to our nation. 
Since the earliest ceremonies in small American towns following the Civil War, we have gathered on Memorial Day to honor and remember those who made the ultimate sacrifice while serving our country. As in those early days of laying wreaths and placing flags, our National Day of Remembrance is often felt most deeply among the families and communities who have personally lost friends and loved ones. Just weeks before the end of the Civil War, a weary President Lincoln pleaded with his fellow citizens to bind up the nation's wounds, to care for him who have, shall have borne the battle, and for his widow and his orphan. Today we honor the service members from all of America's past wars. According to the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs, there are almost 14,000 children and 388,000 spouses that have learned to live with the pain of burying their loved one from serving in the military. As we search for ways to heal, Abraham Lincoln's message of almost 150 years ago can still inspire us today. This, then, is the mission of Memorial Day, to reach out in support of all the soldiers and their families who have sacrificed so much for us. We would like to extend a special welcome to Brigadier General Dar Craig, Director of the Joint Staff of the Utah National Guard, and a very warm welcome as well to our guest speakers, Colonel Dave Dunkley, 75th Air Base Wing Vice Commander, U.S. Army Veteran Roy Murphy, and historian David Nicholas. We are honored also to have 30 members of the Airman's family in attendance this morning. They have traveled from as far away as California, Idaho, Minnesota, and Louisiana to be with us, and we welcome them. We would like to recognize the family of Sergeant Jack Anderson, the family of Lieutenant C.A. Smith, the family of Private First Class Raymond Torgerson, and the family of Lieutenant William Basie. Lieutenant Smith's son, Frank, is here. Private First Class Torgerson's son, Lynn, is with us, as well as Lieutenant Basie's daughter, Carol. Sergeant Anderson's family is represented by nephew S Steve Songer and niece Jean Ellsworth. During the ceremony this morning, the Utah Wing of the Commemorative Air Force will perform the Missing Man Formation in memory of the airmen of the B-18 bomber 36311 that crashed into Iron Mountain on the evening of November 17, 1941. We will pause in the program when the formation flies over the cemetery in tribute to Lieutenant William Basie, Lieutenant Marby Simmons, Lieutenant C.A. Smith, Staff Sergeant Eugene Bynum, and Private First Class Raymond Torgerson. The aircraft pulling up and out of the formation is flown in honor of Major Robert Pirtle, Commander of the 88th Reconnaissance Squadron, and First Engineer Sergeant Jack Anderson of Ogden, Utah, who lost their lives that night. I'd now like to welcome Colonel Dunkley to the podium. Good morning. I am proud to join with you today on behalf of the airmen and families of Hill Air Force Base as we honor the service and sacrifice of the seven member crew of the Douglas B-18 bomber that crashed here in Park City nearly 77 years ago. It is, a very, fitting, it is very fitting that we chose today, Memorial Day, where we reflect. We pay tribute and honor all those that lost their lives while serving in the armed forces. Those courageous men and women earned and deserve a special remembrance. There is a narrative that plays out amongst our servicemen. We see them as young, full of life, and driven. They have a calling. They volunteer to defend the nation they love, knowing full well the price they may have to pay. I had the privilege of reading the biography of one of the crew members Sergeant Jack Anderson, whose early years and aspirations to do something more for others struck a chord with me. 
I learned that Sergeant Anderson was an Ogden High School graduate, and that early on he aspired to join the Army. He wasn't even of age to enlist, so he needed his parents' permission. At just 18 years old, the Army provided the technical training to operate the complex flight systems on the B-18. Despite a grueling training program, he became a flight engineer and was promoted to sergeant. He dreamed of having a family of his own, and he had fallen in love and was engaged to marry a young woman from Salt Lake City. It seems that this young man had everything going for him as he continued his training in preparation for future missions and began building a new family. I can see him now sitting on a stool between the pilot and co-pilot tending to the controls of the B-18 as they navigate through the storm on that fateful night. After striking Iron Mountain, I imagined him working feverishly to help regain control of the doomed plane. And after determining the aircraft was lost, working to aid his fellow airmen in abandoning ship before struggling to get his own parachute on, just as the plane crashed back to Earth. He was 20 years old. He served in the United States Army, and like so many servicemen, we are forever indebted to him. Today, we will leave a lasting memory to the service of Sergeant Anderson and to Major Robert Pearl, who both died as a result of the crash. We will also remember the five crew members who survived the accident. For years to come, we will remember and honor them. Indeed, we owe a huge debt of honor to our fallen. We must remember them, lest we uh, take for granted the liberties that we have today, and we will risk losing them. We must also remember that each of our fallen leave behind family and friends who, if you ask them, will share with you the everlasting, everlasting laughter, love, and life that, of the ones that they have lost. Some of the family members are here with us today, and I hope to learn more about their loved ones. Pray for our fallen tonight. Pray for their families. Share in their stories and remember their sacrifice. God bless our fallen heroes and their families. God bless those who serve today. And God bless the United States. Thank you. Welcome, everybody. My name is David Nicholas, and myself and Steve Latham began this research project uh, two years ago. The seed was originally planted seven years ago, but it wasn't until we met Ken Hewitson, who's standing over here, that was able to tell us exactly where the crash site was, and he'd been there three times in the summer of 1942. So, Kenny, I guess in a lot of ways, this is all because of you today. Thank you. Anyway... <clears throat> Seventy-seven years ago, on a dark and stormy night, a U.S. Army, Army Air Corps B-18 bomber crashed into Iron Mountain in the early morning hours of Monday, November 17, 1941. As you've heard today, two of the seven airmen died, <clears throat> five survived, and all went on to serve with valor in World War II. Overshadowed by events less than three weeks later, on December 7, 1941, Pearl Harbor, this event was largely forgotten over time. Through a series of circumstances, Steve and I, as I mentioned, began this research project two years ago. We like to say that, and it's certainly represented today, we've been benefited by a village that has grown to support us. A village that has provided uh, input on our research that includes over 100 people from 10 different states. So everything that we've been able to accomplish, including today, would not have been possible without this village. And every time that we've needed something, the village has responded. So, thank you. Last year this time, Steve and I were talking about the next phase of our research. And we decided to double down, and this is Steve's responsibility, to contact the uh, airmen's families and begin to get information on them. And during the course of that meeting, I'll never forget it, uh, he said that, he goes, David, I want to share this vision that I have for next Memorial Day, Memorial Day 2018. And he goes, I would like a service in the cemetery right here to honor the airmen and to memorialize this event and also to honor all the sacrifices uh, by members of our military, both pa past and present. And, you know, 
He said, I want a flyby, I want, or missing man formation, I want bagpipes, I want, you know, singers and family members to be there. So we said, sure, why not? And the village responded. And we are honored and we are humbled and we are proud that everybody was here today to help make Steve's dream a reality. Steve, a round of applause for Steve, please. Also, for those in the audience who have served or are currently serving, if you wouldn't mind raising your hand and or standing so that we can acknowledge your uh, commitments and your sacrifice for this great country of ours. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I'm now going to turn over the microphone to a much better speaker than I am, and a gentleman who's been an integral part of our project. One thing that uh, we lack, Steve and I, and uh, thank goodness I'd say for that, we've never parachuted out of a plane, and we've certainly never parachuted out of a plane on a dark and stormy night. The next gentleman that'll speak, Rory Murphy, we wouldn't have been able to add this element of realism without Rory. And Rory has been a, a main part of our research group, and also he can talk uh, from first-hand experience about jumping out of a plane on a dark and stormy night. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Rory Murphy. Thank you, David. I was asked to give this talk in uniform, so my son and I put together this set of Class A's, which is reasonably complete, uh, minus a few trinkets. 30 years later, it still fits. You, you didn't let me get to the punchline, provided I don't breathe. <laughs> I was a paratrooper in the 82nd Airborne Division in the 1st 505th Parachute Infantry Regiment. I was asked to speak today regarding the extraordinary courage that was shown on that evening in 1941 when the B-18 that went down on Iron Mountain in Park City. On that night, seven men were caught in a maelstrom that took the lives of two of them, one of whom in a particularly horrifying, almost supernatural manner. In the dead of night and engulfed in a raging storm, the B-18 bomber was going down and the order was given to abandon ship. These aviators had to jump out of a plane that was on fire with parachutes into a black stormy night with gale force winds. None of them had jump training, and the conditions could not have been more hostile. The courage and fortitude it took to make that jump into those conditions exemplified heroism and the spirit that is the United States Armed Forces. That night, one man, Jack Anderson of Ogden, went down with the plane, and it is strongly believed he was knocked unconscious by the buffeting of the plane. The other casualty was Major Robert Pirtle, the commander of the B-18 and the one who gave the bailout order. When the men jumped, the now pilotless plane began to bank sharply to the left. Where they jumped is where Silver King Mine is, basically in the saddle of these mountains. The men were at 14,000 feet and they drifted right over our heads. The plane, pilotless, banked 180 degrees at the exact wrong time, at the exact wrong altitude. That plane intercepted those paratroopers. The odds of that occurring are almost impossibly remote. The plane struck one of them, Major Pirtle, his body landed on this hill right here. All the men suffered injuries and all were in shock over the events of the crash. When I was in the 82nd Airborne at Bragg, I had an experience when my unit was dropped into a raging storm at night with winds gusting to 60 knots and I was in full combat gear. To this day, I can remember every moment of the paralyzing fear I felt when I jumped into those conditions. Not before or since have I had such an experience, and it was easily the most terrifying thing I've ever gone through in my life. The difference between me and these airmen was I was a very highly trained, very experienced paratrooper in the best airborne division on the planet. 
The end result for this paratrooper was a broken back, a broken hip, and the end of a military career. Winston Churchill once said, the only reason we sleep peacefully in our beds at night is because rough men stand ready to commit great violence at a moment's notice on our behalf. I should add in this day and age that it's both rough men and rough women. Let's take a moment to remember and pay tribute to our rough men and women to whom we owe so much. Let's dedicate that moment with great gratitude and humble thanks to the supreme sacrifices of the airmen of the B-18 bomber that crashed that fateful night in the mountains of Park City. In particular, let's give special gratitude and special appreciation to Major Robert Pirtle and Sergeant Jack Anderson, who made the ultimate sacrifice that night for their country. Thank you.